Hey y'all, Scott here for Art of the Genre, and today we are going to take a look at L1, The Secret of Bone Hill by Len Lakofka, produced by TSR in 1981. Uh, this is a classic adventure, uh, one that many people will uh, recognize, especially for the fantastic uh, cover. Uh, that is done by Bill Willingham. Uh, Bill did a fantastic piece on this one, and he did a lot of the great covers along with Jeff D. and Errol Otis in the very early stages of TSR's Color Module Editions. Those would start to be recovered in 80 and 81, uh, and uh, then those guys were cycled out uh, around 82 when other artists were brought into the fold for more mainstream media. Uh, I love Bill Willingham's work here. Um, you can still find him uh, doing stuff today in the comic Fables. Uh, and he's just fantastic. Um, and uh, a lot of his stuff lends to a comic style. He does an interior piece that's very nice as well for the cover, interior uh, adventure cover. Uh, this piece is very fun. Um, it, I don't know that it necessarily goes with the adventure. Um, but it, it reminds me of the interior cover a little bit that Bill did uh, for Palace of the Silver Princess, which I love. Those are two of my favorite interior module covers that he did. Um, nevertheless, uh, the other interior artwork in this, I think, slips a little bit, except for there's one really nice piece by Jim Rosloff, which I'll show you. Uh, obviously, I'm a huge fan of Jim, so uh, I always love to see his work in these early modules. Um, otherwise, I'll give you a little backstory on Len Lakofka, the writer um, of this particular adventure, and everything in the Lindor Isles series. It's actually a trilogy for um, D and D and from TSR, um, but uh, the third one of those um, was actually shelved. It was never put out until the Silver Edition. Uh, anniversary edition, and then it was um, uh, it was the last piece of AD and D material that's been produced by Wizards of the Coast TSR, to my knowledge, or at least it was at the time, and that would have been in the late '90s, where somebody found it in a drawer, pulled it out, um, and kind of fleshed it out a little bit, and then released it for this. Other uh, modules, however, in this series in classic AD and D can be found on Dragon's Foot that Lynn has done, and he continues the series on. All right, uh, I got to meet Lynn. I, I, it was really kind of funny. I was living in uh, LA and I realized that he lived about 40 minutes from me. So we actually got to have um, lunch one time and uh, kind of talk these things over. Lynn's a great guy. He also did work um, for Gygax Magazine for us uh, when I was the art director for that. And he is known for doing uh, Liaman's Tiny Hut in Dragon Magazine, where he would talk about different uh, ideas he had for the mechanics of the system or adding things into the system. Uh, and one of the things that he is known for are tables and being historically uh, verbose. Uh, he loves those things. He's going to put a lot of detail in his work, and you find that definitely in Bone Hill. And the last thing I'll tell you, just as an aside for Bone Hill, um, was uh, when this module was produced, it was at the absolute crazy heyday of the bloom of TSR's uh, big money-making venture when they exploded onto the map um, in the early 80s. And Lynn, I believe, was paid uh, $11,000 in 1980, 81 for this trilogy. Uh, you could write a trilogy right now uh, for Hasbro Wizards of the Coast, and I don't think you'd sniff $11,000, and that would have been 40 years ago. Um, and that just tells you the kind of money that they were making at the time, giving it away, giving it away to people. But nevertheless, that's my old uh, information here on this series. But one of the things I've told my friends many times um, as I've looked over uh, this particular adventure is, had this been the first adventure I bought, it probably would have been my favorite adventure of all time. However, that, would, that honor goes to Palace of the Silver Princess and Horror on the Hill. Um, which I got first, and those took the place of this one. I didn't get it until much later, but it has all of the ingredients that I would have loved um, when setting up a small uh, campaign and a campaign that I can actually roll into a lot of other different things. Nevertheless, let me get into this. I'm just going to do the whole thing full because I don't want to go into too much detail because Lynn has already done that for you if you read this adventure. So let me grab my notes here, and we'll start uh, going over it. Uh, the adventure setup is pretty cool. 
Um, Len is going to take you to the Lendor Isles, um, and he is going to introduce you to the town of Restonford. Um, and Restonford is going to be the basis of the rest of the adventures. It's kind of the place where you're going to be able to go in and out of and use as your home base. Um, that said, he sets up a table. There's Len with those tables. Uh, and that would be that uh, there are nearly 30 rumors on a, a zero to 100 rolling list that you can get uh, the fake part of the rumor is going to be in italics, if there is anything fake to it. And they're just going to run down thing after thing after thing after thing that's going to talk about things not only in Restiford, but also in the surrounding area, which will get you as adventuring players to move out into the countryside and explore different parts of this. Um, again, one of the things that Lynn does, this is something that I did in folio number eight, which I kind of talked about on Friday, but, uh, he has this uh, as well. And I think this is a great DM tool, especially when you're setting up adventures. And this is what he does with his wilderness adventures. I'm going to go down these. He gives you a certain number of things that are going to be every single feature that he gives you within the adventure for wilderness encounters. That would be the feature He's going to hit you with a feature that would be if this is a hill, uh, you know, a marsh, anything like that, and talk about what it is specifically. The inhabitants of this place he's going to give you. He's going to give you the lair that would be if there is something there, a ruin or a cave or something like that, and the major inhabitants that are in it. Um, he's going to give you encounter chances for what you're going to encounter in this particular wilderness zone. He's going to give you the actions of the NPCs or enemies that are going to be there, how they're going to relate to the players when they show up. And then he's going to give you a roster detail, which is going to go pretty significantly into every single possible monster or encounter that you're going to have in there that's, that's kind of important. It's a lot, but it's a great way to set it up. It gives everything the DM needs to really get a feel um, for these particular zones that the players will go out into. And this adventure gives you so many great options. Uh, it starts out with the Dwelmer Forest. This one is going to have a temple with some clerics in it. That'll also be a good way for the, for the uh, characters to have a fallback point if they interact well with these clerics and kind of accept um, the, the, the basis that they're... Uh, and why they're out there. And it gives you a template on place for healing if you foster that uh, role-playing wise. Uh, there's Bald Hill, which has orc thieves in it and some half orc thieves in it, which is kind of fun. Then he goes into, then it goes into simple things that have like three or four different uh, locations. Um, but I'm just going to give you the first one. The first one is in this section is the Guardian Peak. Uh, that has a bunch of random adventures in it. You can run into a ranger or other people that are out or down on the luck that are out in the wilderness for any particular reason. Then there's another one that uh, consists of the Pebble Hills, slash, 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 a couple other different places. And that has gnolls in it. Everybody who watches these things know I love gnolls. So uh, that's one of my favorites that uh, you have the encounters and you can uh, make different tribes and stuff of the gnolls, put them in, but he's got some great statistics uh, for them as well and their modus operandi. And then the last one is Bone Hill and the surrounding areas. Um, Bone Hill obviously is the big part of this adventure because Bone Hill, he is going to uh, have a nice castle with a lower level, basements um, of Bone Hill, and that will be the basis for this adventure. That's where the characters are going to go and probably spend their most time after, the, uh, after you utilize uh, the wilderness areas as a DM if you choose to, but they make a good kind of jump point or areas to get your feet wet before you go into Bone Hill Castle. Uh, proper. Um, the, it's very well detailed. He has a lot of great maps. There are maps all over this adventure. Um, and pretty much everything in it is going to be detailed. I'm not going to go into the specifics of Bone Hill. Uh, it is a standard dungeon. It's, it's well put together. Len is going to give you fantastic detail on everything in it because uh, he'll throw the kitchen sink at you if you allow him to. This is a, only a 28-page adventure, but there is so much in here. It reminds me a lot of The Lost City um, that I've already gone over because there's so much available to you to build around. Um, so Bone Hill, that castle is going to be your main adventure point, and you're going to go into those three levels and deal with the uh, various you know monsters and so forth that are in there and get your experience. However, uh, after that, and I think that only takes you maybe 14 or 15 pages into it, then they have a, a map break in the module, and then they go into Restonford itself. He is going to go into incredible detail, as he loves to do, um, on Restonford. You're going to know 
every person, their kids, their you know, their ancestry, you name it, Len is going to have it in here uh, about pretty much everybody in this pretty good-sized town, uh, including Castle Restonford, including the Baron that lives there, the Baroness and everybody else. And if you're using this random uh, rumor table, you can find out certain details about Restonford itself that you might be able to also utilize to make yourself some, some town adventures um, and investigate other cool things and maybe get yourself into Restonford Castle or deal with specific things there. Um, so that is pretty important. It gives you a, a great maps and details on places within the town. Uh, the biggest ones being Falco's Tavern, uh, the Tavern of the West Wind, uh, Inn of the Dying Minotaur, and then again, there's a nice map of Restonford Castle. So you're going to have a massive amount of information here as a DM to create a campaign in Restonford uh, and the Lindor Isles. Lindor Isles are located in Greyhawk, but you kind of have to uh, work with it to see exactly where they are, look that up. Um, but if you're using Greyhawk, you can use that. Otherwise, they're island. It's a, it's a nice island chain. You can put that anywhere. Um, again, utilizing these particular pieces, the next uh, L2 is going to be the Assassin's Knot. Um, that's the next one in this particular series, and that's going to deal with the murder of the Baron of Restonford and the, the company traveling to a little town uh, called Garretton. Um, so that is something to deal with here, that he has got it set up um, kind of like the U series where you use this uh, as your main base, i.e. Saltmarsh, i.e. Restonford, uh, and therefore go from there. Um, and you've got the ability to move out um, and obviously have other places to go in here. Uh, I, you know, I'm just, I give a clap to Lynn, uh, a great guy, a great DM, very thoughtful, and you're not going to have a lot of questions as a DM in here if you read it, because he's going to tell you the answers. Uh, sometimes you would almost say he's got too much information if such a thing is possible. But again, it's only 28 pages. This isn't like a massive volume, but he just gets it in there. Um, and I applaud him for that. I really, really love this adventure. Uh, because there's so many opportunities for you here. It's uh, it's a standard kind of temperate climate with a little bit warmth uh, uh, toward the north end of the aisle where you can get into a little bit of jungle because there's volcanic activity if you wanted to. Um, so it just gives you a lot of options. There's, there's the sea routes. Uh, it's an island, so you're going to have ships. Uh, so many options, so many things you can do with it. If you're looking to set up a campaign, this is a great adventure for you. It's not a one-shot. There's a lot of depth to it and a lot of places to go. And again, I said, I don't know how many to date he has in the Lindor uh, Isles series, but I bet you there's at least six of them. Uh, three of them, at least three of them, I think, are available on Dragon's Foot for free. Um, if you wanted to continue this adventure and just flesh this out as a massive uh, campaign. Uh, it never disappoints. You're, and if you like tables, you like rolling on tables, uh, you're going to love this adventure uh, too. Um, so kudos again to Len. I'm going to give this a, uh, you know, a double thumbs up, um, for an early TSR adventure. And, um, I think that's all I've got to say about it. Um, I'm not, like I said, I don't want to go into too much detail about Bone Hill because it is just a standard dungeon. There's nothing that's going to throw you here. Um, but it is bing, 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 well set up, well done, read through it. You got it. Um, and I didn't find anything in there that went, hmm, that doesn't make sense. Uh, you're really going to find that with Lynn's work. So that is the secret of Bone Hill L1. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if anyone comments on this video, uh, then you can send me an email after commenting on the video to uh, my email address, which is in this video's description. And I will send you a free copy PDF of folio number eight, which I reviewed on Friday. So anybody just comment and you get one. Uh, and if you send me that note, so thank you again, and we will see you tomorrow. I'm going to do something a little different tomorrow on Tuesdays. It's going to be non TSR Tuesday. So we're going to be reviewing something else then, uh, from the big collection. Uh, anyway, thanks again. And uh, we hope to see you later. Please subscribe and hit notifications and great gaming.